Have you been wanting to color a bar above a certain value? And does that value need to be dynamic, such as the average or a norm of a player during a season? Well, in this week's Power BI for Sport tutorial, I will show you how to dynamically stack bar values based on another value. So let's get started. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe below, but also hit that notification bell icon so you are notified of future videos. So in this week's video, what we're going to talk through is looking at how to stack bars uh, based on a dynamic changing value. And so that value might be something like an in-season average for training load, or it might be a match norm, uh, looking at where they are above that or below that. The one thing with Power BI is it is actually challenging to break up just a single value by a column series because it will break them apart or it will uh, stack them based on what they did in those values. So you kind of need two rows almost. So what we're going to do is we're going to create those two rows for Power BI to use and be able to value, uh, color our values. So what we're going to do for this example is I'm going to show you how to color a weekly load based on the average of the in-season weekly load. But what we're going to do first is I've already made a few changes within my um, my workbook here. So I'm going to add those to this graph. So first of all, we need to change our date to show it by a week value. And so I've already added a week value into my date table. And I want that on the axis. So here is our summed weekly load. And then for the, uh, to be able to see sort of the in-season value, I've also added a season stage, which I'm calling as my in-season or pre-season. And so you can see that here now, where our pre-season is here, and then this is our in-season value. So one of the first things you can do is, uh, or one of the first options you have, I should say, is let's just say we, we look at the values here of our, um, our load, and we can use an absolute value, for example, to color them above and below. And so what we might do here is we'll create our two values first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and say, um, we're going to go total distance uh, underscore lower equals. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a value. So we're going to use our, let's call it cutoff. And we're going to use, just say, for example, 35,000. So when the value of total distance hits that, we want it just to cut off. So then what we can do and say is be like um, here, we're going to call this our result. And we'll go equals if um, we want to sum total distance equals greater than cutoff, just give me the cutoff, otherwise sum total distance. And then what we need to do is make sure I've got it, Ooh, no, I need to make sure I've put my brackets in the right place here. And then we can return our result. So if we were to remove our total distance here and just put total distance lower into our column value, you can see that it only ever gets to 35,000 unless it's below 35,000. So what we can do is then take that same measure and we'll create another one and we'll call it total distance upper. And this time we're going to go and say, um, what we'll do is we'll actually create another variable as total distance and call it some total distance. So this time, rather than going and calculating it each time, we're going to go that there. And then if we also want, or if it goes above it, what we're going to put is total distance if I can spell properly, and we're going to minus our cutoff. Otherwise, we're just going to give total distance again. 
hence why I made this a variable. So there we have that one. And if we were to then place this here, oh, we need to make this a stacked, which I do have it as a stacked, uh, because I've got the series, it won't let me stack. If I add that in here, now you can see the values have appeared. If I was to go and uh, remove these two, oh, actually, let's just do this. Rather than that, we'll go and just create a second uh, value just above. Oh, just need this to actually copy for me. There we go. So we can compare here. If we were going to remove these two, we'll add total distance into our value here. And we can see that there is uh, some issues here. Oh, 35 and 21. No, there's some issues on this one. See, it's not uh, removing our values because what I'm meaning to do here is if it's less than, we want it to be zero. Okay, there we go. So now our values should match. So 34, 34, 36. Okay, so now we've got that covered. And now you can see our values equal. So let's remove that one. And pull this down and so as you can see you can now color based on the two values so for example if I make the lower value uh, say like a gray because we're not too bothered and if it goes above we can make it a red color so you can be like okay now it's red I can see where I've got to to make it a brighter red so that's one option you can use your uh, an absolute value to give you that uh, that number your other option is to create like an in-season average or an average value, a norm, whatever you want to call it, to use as your cutoff. So I've already started or I've put in a, me a measure here. So what we're going to do is we'll add this as a line value. So all I have at the moment, obviously, is this is just as one. So you won't see that on here. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a measure that will uh, summarize our values by week get us the average across all those weeks, and then make sure that our data only includes anything from the in season. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a calculate function, a average X nested inside, and then we're gonna use summarize to give us our table. So here, what we're gonna use is load data. We want our athlete, athlete from load data to be there as a group by we also want and this is where we're going to use our date table week so that we make sure we get the week value rather than the by day value and so that's all our group by so our table is load data our group by is athlete and week and then we're going to create our value here and all we're going to do is some total distance so there is our summarize and our table sorted We'll close those brackets and then we're going to use our value here. And then we'll close those brackets. And then the main change here is we want to make sure that we get all the data in the date table. So we need to go all date table date. And then we want to make sure that we only use the in season data that we have. So then we need to go season stage equals in season and so there is our measure so if we were to walk through this again first off we're summarizing on the inside to get our value by week as a summed total distance we're then averaging that value using average x and then we're using calculate to change our filter contexts to give us all of the date table and i don't want date there actually all of the date table and uh, only the season stage and the load data that equals in season. So now if we click enter, we can see where our in season average has fallen and it's a little bit higher than our 35,000, but there you can see it's around 37 for just the in season, like just alone, just the in season alone. So now what we can do is rather than using our cutoff as being 35,000, we can remove that and we can get our in-season average there. So we add that there. Now we can see it's jumped up and we can see where our, our gray blue colors are now filled in. So then we just need to do the same thing with our upper. 
in season average. And you can see everything drops down a little bit, but it's absolutely perfect because we can now see our averages here and what we have left over. So our average is 37,000, 37,000 rounded up to 18. So there you go. So you can see there a really easy way of being able to manually, uh, is maybe the best way I've put it, manually stack bars using a dynamic value. So when I say dynamic value, I mean that in season average could change by athlete that you have selected. So for example, if we were to add a single athlete here, we'll make it a slicer. And I believe I do have this filtered on this page. So I will remove that from my filter page. So there, that's everyone. And you can see why it's a bit funky there. But so if we go athlete one, if we go athlete two, there is their average is the 36,990. So if I was to add that in again, let me add that here this average here will change. So 36,989, 36,961. And you can see it's very similar, more from the point of view that my data isn't exactly perfect. Uh, but you can see the changes that are occurring based on the athlete that's selected. So there, I hope that video was helpful for you guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit like below. And let me know how you're going to use a dynamic value to color the bars of your loading charts or your match reports or anything. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope to see you again where we will continue to power performance through data. Thank you.